In this video, we are going to learn about data flows. Data flows play a, a central role in Centerprise. Data flows are essentially the orchestration of your uh, data and how it's going to flow through your system. So a data flow contains a set of transformations that are executed in a user-defined sequence. Usually data is read from one or more data sources, goes through a series of transformations, and transformed data is written to one or more destinations. In a data flow, you can mix and match any number of sources and destinations on a single visual data flow diagram, such as what you're seeing on the screen, and specify transformations, validations, and other transformations as the data moves down the pipeline. Centerprise data flows help you build seamless integration between data sources and destinations, helping you integrate applications within the enterprise as well as integrate outside customers. I have shared on the screen one moderately complex data flow. To create a new data flow, you go to File, New, and click on Data Flow. You're presented with a clean slate that is a blank designer on the right-hand side and all these items in the toolbox on the left hand side. You can drag and drop these items from the toolbox onto the designer to create your flow. You can create items such as the sources, the destinations, and transformations. Let's go ahead and uh, create a very simple data flow that we can use to learn the basic concepts inside a flow designer. So let's go ahead and uh, drag and drop one Excel workbook source and let's go to the properties to specify the properties for the source. When I go to the properties, I'm presented with this wizard and this wizard will walk me through all the different steps and it'll ask me all pertinent questions about the source. And at the end of the process, I'll be done with creating the source. And uh, navigation for this wizard is by clicking on these two buttons at the top left corner so in the very first page, let's go ahead and uh, specify where my file is. I specify this customers.xls, that is my source file, and I click on this next page button. It shows me the layout for this source. I can go to the next page. If I want, I can go back to the back page by clicking on this previous page button. So this is how the navigation works. I click on OK and my source is ready. You can click on this chevron to expand this box and it shows you all the items and all the attributes of the source and these attributes being uh, the fields inside my Excel source. Uh, there is a collapse and expand feature here. So if you, if you want, you can collapse or expand this tree. And uh, these triangles on the right hand side, they show the port, that means this is the outgoing port and this is what is going to be used for a mapping. Let's go ahead and uh, create a destination so that we can see the different concepts of destination and the mapping. In this case, I'm going to take this data and uh, put this data into a database table inside uh, a SQL Server database. So I drag and drop database table destination from destinations and you can see here the header is yellow and that depicts it is a destination and the green header shows it's a source. Again I go to the properties and I'm presented with the wizard. This wizard in the very first page is asking about the connection information for the database table. I'm going to use one of the recently used connections, test the connection and go to the next page and in the next page it is asking me which table I want to work with. I'm going to pick the table that is existing table here. And uh, I'm going to leave everything by default. Go to next page. It shows me the layout. Go to the next page and this is the last page. I click on OK and my destination is ready. So if I click on the chevron, it shows me the details of this destination. As you can see here, the destination is a more complex tree and it has input and output both. So if I expand the input 
tree, you can shrink or expand these boxes using these green handles around the periphery of this box. So I expand it a little bit. You can see here this is input and you can see here uh, the ports are on the left hand side. That means in the mapping the data is going to come into the input and if I expand the output the, the ports are on the right hand side. That means the data can go only out of this output ports. So let's go ahead and have a look at the map. Map is a very key concept in creating any flow and map depicts that how data is going to flow. In this Excel source if I right click on this box and preview my data it shows me this is the data the customer the company name the contact name and so on and so forth so these are the pieces of data and how they're going to go into de into destination I drag and drop uh, the customer onto the customer ID in this case and you can see here immediately there is a line drawn between the port of customer that is outgoing port and incoming port of customer ID and this line represents that there is a map between customer and customer ID and the customer source data is going to go into this column inside the table so that is the meaning of a map to create maps one way I already showed to you that is drag and drop the field onto a destination field similarly I can drag and drop the company name at the top of company name and it creates the map or second way is if you hover the top of this outgoing port you can create a line and it can go directly into this input port for the destination that's the second way to create the map. In the designer, you can undo any of the actions that you performed. So let me go ahead and undo all the maps. Now we don't have any maps. The reason I did that was to show you the auto map feature in Centerprise. You can see here many of these fields, they are common between the source and destination. And there has to be a feature which can automatically determine that what fields are matching and create a map between the fields. For that, you drag and drop the top node at the top of the top node uh, for the destination. In this case, Excel source goes at the top of this input insert and immediately you can see here it has created maps for all the matching fields. The company name is going to company name, the contact name is going to contact name and so on and so forth. Only that customer and customer ID they were not mapped because the names are not matching in this case I'll create manually a map between these two so that's how you create a map between two different ports and two different entities for the layout there are other options available to you let's go ahead and have a look at those you can see here uh, the first option is auto layout diagram if I click on that it does an auto layout and puts them into the optimal place let's say my data flow is very complex it will try to optimize the visual representation so if I go back to the original data flow I created and click on the auto layout diagram for this you can see here this is what application thinks the optimal layout coming back to this next option is about zooming if you want you can zoom in zoom out so you can zoom in completely or fit to window or zoom out completely so these are the options for zooming or zooming out so I'm going to bring it back to 100%. Next option is to print this data flow. And then these are options to expand or collapse each of these boxes. So say if I click on collapse all, it collapses these boxes. And if I click on expand all, it expands all the boxes. And then auto size all is, is going to auto size everything so that you don't need to scroll. So if I had sh um, shrunk this box and I was using scroller and if I click on auto size all it is going to expand it so that we are not going to need scroller anymore then there are options about uh, changing the line uh, from direct lines to orthogonal lines and for that if you click on use orthogonal lines it is going to create these lines so those are going to go orthogonal then there are two other options one is uh, replace parameter infos and this is a find and replace feature and comes very handy when you create one data flow for one scenario however if you want to deploy that same data flow into different scenario for example I created this flow using one Excel file and uh, pointed into the destination we pointed to one database table say I was doing it for uh, a testing and I want to deploy this data flow into 
into production environment. In that case, I would like to change my source file path and destination database information. Since this flow is very simple, I can go to the properties and change it. But if I had uh, very many of these, I would need some kind of find and replace functionality. And that's what is find and replace parameter infers. If I click on this, it shows me for the destination and source, you can see here database destination. If I click on this, it shows me current database information. If I want to change it, I click on this button and I can make the modification here. Similarly, if I go to Excel source, it shows me the file path. If I want, I can change the file path from here. So this is uh, find and replace parameter information. And uh, last but not the least, this is a data quality mode. A special data quality mode is available to help you capture error messages and related status info as records move through the data flow pipeline. In this way, the data quality statistics can be written into any destination so that both the individual data records and aggregate data profile are available for review and analysis. If you click on this data quality mode, for output, let me expand this, and you can see here there is a node added to the output messages. And this contains all the information about any errors that has happened so far or any messages related to the flow so far. It contains the total count of the messages, error count, warning count, information count, message text, database action, even the items if there are multiple items inside the messages and you have items such as the message type, element name, message text, action, if there's a, if it is coming from a data quality rule, you can have all this information inside items and uh, uh, now you have the messages inside your output and they, are, they all have outgoing ports. That means you can map them into any destination and you can create this report about any errors or any messages or any warnings happening inside the data flow. So this is what is uh, the data quality mode. If I uncheck it, it goes away and there are no messages. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the different options available in the context menu for any of the boxes. So if I click on a source, you can see here, apart from the properties, I have options such as collapse tree subnodes, resize to fit, or if you want to sort the entire tree, or if you want to rename the box, um, then you have options about the preview data. This we already saw, and this comes very handy when you're designing the flow. In that case, you can have clear visibility into the data as it flows through the pipeline. You can see how the data is. In this case, uh, if I preview the data, it shows me this is how my data is. and say you had uh, multiple steps, it will show you data at multiple steps. For example, if I go back to my complex data flow and uh, this is the data at this step, it looks like this. And when I go to the next step, after joining data with some other data, you can see here it has added a few more columns and it is giving me some warnings and errors and all that. So at each step, you can do the preview and see how your data looks like. Then coming back to the next option that is quick profile, you can quickly profile your data and see how it looks like. So if I do quick profile, you can see here, it shows me the total number of records is 91. If I keep expanding, you can see here for each of the fields, it shows me for the customer, the company name and the contact name, it shows me the data type, null count, null percent, error count, error percent, warning count, warning percent, minimum value, maximum value, sum and all that. So you can see all that data um, for each of the fields inside your uh, data source by doing quick profile. From inside the application, if you want to edit the file, you can click on edit file and depending on if it can be opened inside the product, it will be open inside the enterprise product. Otherwise, it will open using the appropriate program. So in this case, it is Excel sheet. If I click on edit file, it will open the file uh, uh, using Excel. As you can see here, it has opened it. Then um, the sources inside Centerprise, they can be a regular source or a singleton source. Singleton source reads just the first record from the source. It is used mostly in some kind of configuration scenario where you want to read just one record. Uh, then there is an option to generate 
XML schema from the layout and it comes handy when you're dealing with uh, tree layouts. In those cases, you can directly create the XSD uh, for the layout and use that to create further layouts. Then you have options to delete, cut, copy, and paste. Say for example, I want to copy this and paste again. It creates a copy of it with uh, a suffix of two. Let's go ahead and undo it. The context menu options change slightly depending on which box you are at. We just saw all the options for the Excel source. If I go and right click on the destination database, my edit file option changes into view table data and view table schema. When you click on view table data, application is going to run a SQL query and run you the real data from the table. Let's go ahead and click on that and you can see here from the customer's table it ran the SQL query and shows you the real data from the table. Similarly, if I go back and click on view table schema, it shows me the real schema for the table and that schema was retrieved from the database. So these are the context menu options available normally and uh, it can have a slight change depending on which box you are at inside a data flow. And uh, once you have data flow created, you can verify the data flow for any um, structural problems. You can see here I did the verification and verification successful, no errors found. That means this is ready to be run. And to run a data flow, you'll pick your data, you'll pick your server from this drop down and click on this button to start the data flow to run it. This is the way to run it directly from inside the designer, or if you want, you can take this data flow and schedule it to run on the server using server scheduler. These are the things that I want to talk about for a data flow. Thanks for watching this video.